ரோஷினி ரவிக்குமார் உங்க வீடியோ வந்து மியூட் பண்ணுங்க Sir. Uh, sir. Uh, Mari, Mari yeah, I'm ready. Uh, can we start, sir? Okay. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah. Sir. Uh, sir. Thank you, sir. Still, uh, still sir. some of the still some of the participants are not mute in their uh... Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Mari yes. Pan, sir. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mari Pan, sir. Sir. Oh, okay, okay. Sir. sir. Mari Pan. Pan, sir. sir. ராஜன் சார் 
हाँ अंदर पेज है ना ओके सर हाँ सर चल चल सर मारी पंच सर हाँ यस सर स्टार्ट करना होगा ओके हाँ यस सर यस हाँ या वेरी गुड इवनिंग टू यू ऑल द पीजी डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ ज़ूआलजी गवर्नमेंट आर्ट्स कॉलेज मेलो प्राउडली इनवाइट यू टू फॉर वन डे नेशनल विज्ञान ऑन फिश प्रायसाइट्स और ऑन द राइस लेट अस बिगिन आवर वेबिनार विथ अ वार्म वेलकम एड्रेस I call upon Dr. T. Kanapan, Assistant Professor of Zoology, Government Arts College, Mailur, for delivering the welcome address. Thank you. Thank you, Anandha. Have a nice webinar. Ah, oh, okay. Good. Good evening, Anandha. On behalf of the organizing committee, PG Department of Zoology, Government Arts College, Mailur, I take this opportunity to extend my Warm welcome to you all for a one-day national webinar on fish parasites or on the rice. It gives me an immense pleasure to welcome our principal, Madam Dr. S. Manimegala Devi, to bless this auspicious event. Next, I would like to welcome resource person Dr. S. Ravi Chandra, Associate Professor. from the center of advanced study in marine biology annamala university to deliver a valuable lecture on the webinar i, I am very happy to welcome all the professors research scholars students and all participants from all over the country for this one day national webinar i pray almighty god to bestow with his blessings for the webinar a yeah, grand success next i request dr mari pansar organizing secretary of this webinar from the department of zoology to introduce the resource person dr s yes, uh, ravi chandra thank you thank you mr pansar ah okay sir good evening to all it is a great honor for me to greet and introduce my teacher and the great researcher dr s ravichandran for this webinar to share his knowledge for the intellectual online gathering dr s ravichandran is working as a associate professor in the cs marine biology of annamalai university from the past 20 years he is not only an instructor but he is a great academic researcher he has published 184 research papers in various reputed journals like naplius zoological studies zoo keys zoo taxa crustaceana and parasitological research act of parasitologica aquaculture fish and cell fish immunology journal of biological chemistry and microbial pathogenesis he has also identified eight new crustacean species he has published the seven books under his research guidance 13 research scholars have been awarded doctoral degree and 26 research scholars have been awarded a degree he has refined under the able guidance of world reputed crustacean researchers by professor t kannu pandi professor peter n new us singapore professor mads university of gothenburg professor jean paul trains university of montpellier france through visiting scientist fellowship and a distributed european school of taxonomy programs he has been completed nearly 1.5 crore worth of research projects from different funding agencies like dst dbt mof mos and royal swedish academy really i am very happy to introduce such a eminent person for this webinar to share his valuable knowledge to the participants thank you sir sir thank you maria pan uh, first of all i thank uh, the principal of the government college melur dr manimal manimegala devi and good friend of mine dr maria pan and the co organizing secretaries uh, dr kanappan and dr rajan for giving me the right opportunity to share some of my uh, findings with you people i also extending my thanks to the authorities of anamala university and my mentor late professor kanu pandi and ladders of cs in marine biology as well as my students and uh, everyone of you and uh, most important the participants 
so uh, before uh, enter into the topic so what i am going to talk in this program is mainly on the problems of aquatic animals then common fish diseases then types of fish parasites and uh, role of parasitology in fishery sciences apart from that the effects of parasites and is there any changes due to the climate change on parasitic infection so these are the things i am going to discuss so uh, before the talk so uh, let us think about the common problem for the uh, for the aquatic organisms so generally the aquatic organism they are facing the problem for the poor water quality then next to the uh, water quality the parasites are uh, causing a lot of problem then ulcer diseases then predators then lack of oxygen then viral and tumors problem and, uh, and uh, uh, toxic pesticides problems are the major problem if you can look on the uh, fish diseases in the fish diseases more than 63 percentage of the fish disease caused by the bacterial then followed by the bacterial inf the parasitological uh, infection that is 16.12 percentage then especially in the uh, fish parasitic diseases the 75 percentage of the uh, parasitic infection exclusively for the parasite the infection may be uh, mixed with other uh, pathogens like bacteria or fungal and other things so different kind of animal association as a biology people we might have been studied in our uh, uh, course of time so among the different animal association the three things are more important so they are the commensalism mutualism and parasitism so parasitism is the most important because so one side is benefited one side is harmed the term parasite how it is evolved means it was originated from a greek word para means besides and cyto means food in the parasites having the two characters so the all the parasites are the invertebrates so none of the organisms during their life span they never they can't miss the parasitic infection maybe a perma Organization based on the dependency and host specificity, we can categorize different types. So first, we can discuss about the localization. So localization means site of attachment. In the site of attachment, the parasites are divided into three major groups: the ectoparasites, those parasites are living in the outside the body; then endoparasites, they are living inside the body; then uh, hemoparasites, they are living inside the blood. Then based on the dependency. they are a different type like permanent parasites a parasite which permanently live in the contact with host that is a permanent parasite then some of the parasites which can live without the host also so without host also they can live but sometimes they can take food from the host that is a facultative parasite then obligatory parasites these parasites which cannot live without a host so without the host they can't survive but next type of fourth type of parasite is a periodic parasite to so the periodic parasites which visits on the host in the interval so certain period only they will come and they can consume their food and they can uh, in, make a infestation then coming to the host specificity there are two types narrow host specificity and broad host specificity so broad host specificity they have a n number of uh, host then narrow they have a particular type of host so on that basis they are divided into three types they are monocinous parasite so monocinous parasite means they are adapted to live in only one host in their life on their entire life span then oligocinous parasites they live in several hosts then polygynous parasites they don't have any specificity so these are the things that the parasitic classification so why we have to study for this parasitology studies what will be the need of this study because in the recent times so as you know as you all our on the place is producing a tremendous uh, production the aquaculture production uh, in the aquaculture cultured species or in a open oceans or whatever but in the andhra pradesh the ectoparasite diseases account for 70 percentage problem from the ectoparasites so when the bacterial and fungal diseases account only 27.5 percent in the bacterial followed by the fungal 2.5 percent respectively so these are the that much infection due to the ectoparasite then losses of 1 million us dollars this is induced the mortality impaired due to this uh, parasitic infection in andhra pradesh alone 
then the total loss due to the argulances in indian major corp culture have been estimated 29.524.40 hectare per year then the several management issues along with the diseases of freshwater aquaculture were reported causing the problem loss about 26.12 crores of year in west bengal there is another higher production in our uh, maritime states then some of the other larval digenian and cysto uh, parasites present the body cavity and muscles they are, and uh, their fins and their scales they make make it uh, colorless in the things that make a mark that will affect the marketability of the fishes so all those things are considering under so one part is an academic interest we have to study for the parasitic diseases another one is increasing the population and increasing the need of the fishery products we have to the another part the parasitic infection parasitic number also increasing so we have to control their parasites so we must prevent the losses so we have to increase the production we must learn about the parasite and uh, their biological and taxonomic aspects also then only we can able to increase the profitability coming to the topic so already the, the organizer has mentioned the topic that is the fish parasites around the rice so the fish parasites the fish parasites they are classified into different types so classification based on their morphological and other characteristic features how the scientists are classified means so they are in a unicellular form they are as a protozoa then multicellular they are in a helminthes parasites then the third biggest part is a crustacean parasites so crustacean means you, we may we may think Uh, the most economically important species and their palatability taste like prawns crabs and lobster so this is one part of the crustacean if you can look another part of the crustacean they are harmful there a lot of harmful crustaceans are there i can say these crustaceans are enemies of fishes because they are causing lot of problems so one part alone we are studying so remaining part of the crustacean we can discuss one by one So coming to this protozoan parasites, the protozoans also, uh, based on their habitat, they are divided into two types. They are internal parasites, self two types. Some of them are living in the tissues, then some of them are living in the blood also. Then shape of these protozoan parasites are categorized into three types. They are ciliates and flagellates and sporozoa. Then the Uh, the coming slide, you we can uh, see about the how the uh, protozoan parasites will affect the host. So first, the uh, protozoan invasion to the host, then skin cellular irritation. Due to that, the parasites are affected by the abnormal swimming that hinder the swimming of the uh, fishes. Then excessive mucus production to protect themselves. Then skin cellular destructions are like hemorrhages. Then erosion in the ulcers. then in the white spot also will appear due to this protozoan parasites then next another part of important aspects is a helminthes so the helminthes parasites are two types they are platyhelminthes and round worms so in the platyhelminthes they are the trematodes and cystodes then round worms that they are the normal forms of the parasite and their adult forms also act as a parasites and in these stromatodes are known as the gill flukes and uh, they have two types monogenia and digenia the monogenians are the gill flukes and uh, skin flukes then digenians are the adult and encystered metacercaria larval forms so you can able to this coming slide is a stromatode infection so during the uh, collection time uh, in our investigations we got lot of fishes are uh, their gills are look like an uh, cockroach egg but there is not an cockroach egg that is a didymos swoid so didymos swoid is a digenian parasite so that make you, uh, you all know the, about the gill structure is like a comb like say, gill filaments and gill rackers so here this, this didymos swoids are making a cluster like structure all the, the torsion of the gill region so once the torsion is made the fishes can't respire properly if the respiration is arrested totally all the metabolic activities of the organisms are affected then coming to the another round worms so another round worm parasites sir so, so many types of nematodes are there 
some of the nematodes are living in their uh, body surface of the fish some of them are in the gills also so here i wish to talk about one of the most important and uh, narrow host specificity animal so that is that is a nematode parasite so that nematode parasite the specificity is very narrow so what you are seeing in this uh, slide is an ovary of one fish so these fish these parasites will affect only the ovary of the fishes so that it destroy the ovary of the fishes and egg development everything so once it affect the egg development once it affect the egg development it affect the reproductive reproduction and the progeny of the fishes also so the one parasite size is it's coming around more than 70 cm length so likewise the number of parasites we were isolated from the um, fishes especially the, the what you are seeing this uh, coming slide is here uh, occurrence of the nematode parasites philometra piscicera so that we were studied in ethological studies also it ruptured and it damaged the entire ovary region so likewise it affect the reproductive behavior of the fishes also and coming to the next type of parasites is a crustacean parasite so crustacean about the crustacean i said earlier in the crustacean harmful crustacean that is a parasitic crustacean that having the three types they are copepods they are with the tiny form small form then isopods their legs are same in size the third type is an amphipods in the amphipod parasite their legs are different in size so based on their that only they were categorized let us see about the uh, first one a tiny uh, type of parasite that's a copepods so copepods the free living copepods are there they are beneficial a lot of life fish we are getting from the uh, copepod also free living copepods then apart from these parasitic copepods what you are seeing is a gill region of the sea boss that is a latus calcarifer in tamil name you can call it as a very tasty fish kodua so these are the parasites we were collected from the latus calcarifer from the velar eshurine region likewise it is not affecting only, not only a sea bosses it also affect other fishes also from we are from our earlier studies it was reported it is um, uh, it affect more in carangids fishes like carangids malabaricus and then alpes and the parasomatous niger like niger like fishes are much affected by this uh, copepod parasites so these are the some of the copepod parasites we were isolated and identified and characterized from the uh, marine fishes and marine and estuarine fishes like most of them are the predominant species are the caligus groups like caligus epidemius caligus and the pomolacus the notopomolacus and other type of uh, copepods we were uh, isolated uh, from the uh, marine and estuarine fishes then uh, as, as i uh, said earlier most of the uh, copepods are very tiny forms but rare cases are there so this is a kind of copepods this is a lernaeus parati this is we uh, were uh, uh, collected from the hemirhambus fur fishes this also around 7 cm length we can see this parasite externally that means the scales are above the scales of the fishes but it penetrate up to the up to the kidney of the regions so most of these parasites will attach into the that penetrate until to the uh, head kidney region so once they affect the kidney region all the excretory products and excretory system will affect for the fishes on that way they are causing lot of problems then this is another interesting parasite another interesting parasite this is the photoni so this we were collected uh, from the uh, fast swimming fishes as you all know very well about the fast swimming terrestrial animals etc so this is an fast swimming fishes like sailfish and swordfishes so this swordfish will swim more than 110 kilometers per hour so per hour it is swimming means so those uh, things are attached in their anterior or beak like regions in the mouth regions so they can't attach easily but this glyphotus catani is attaching into the and their beak regions of the fishes near to the mouth region near to the gills also so even that 110 kilometers fast speed also they can able to attach in their snout region that much they are adapted their size is around 2 to 2.5 cm length so it damage the snout regions it also affect the feeding behavior and swimming behavior behavior of here for swimming sword fishes layer and other organisms let us pass on to the another part so another part is some type of types of isopod parasites so here so these parasites having the same kind of legs same size of legs so among these isopods also there are three types are there they are cymothoid so cymothoids are mainly the affect only the fin fishes then second one is the second slide the parallel side i am showing the c and d 
So that is a boprid parasite. So usually the boprid parasite, they don't have any eyes and other sense organs, but their, uh, their effects are very tremendous. So these are the fin fishers, it will affect the fin fishers A and B, that's a cymatoid parasite. Then on C and D, sir, D is a male and C is a female. So always the males are clinging with the female. So the, it is always affect the shrimps and the lobster and crabs. It will eat the entire branchial region of the uh, shrimps and lobsters and prawns also. So another third type uh, that is uh, that is not, that was not uh, much infection in our Indian coastal region, but that was a uh, lot of problem in Australian waters. That is the uh, uh, nathid isopod. So nathid is an uh, nathid is a tongue eaters. It is otherwise known as a tongue eaters. Coming to the adaptations of these isopods. So these isopods, every organisms, each and every organism, they have some adaptation. Then only they can able to survive in their environment. So likewise, the paras parasites have an very extraordinary adaptations. So here, these isopods having a hard exoskeleton because they are ectoparasites. Then they have a brood pouch. Then they have a menaka larvae. That larvae name is a menaka. Then they have a very strong and sharp claws and ant antennae for attachment. Then they have a sepalon, perion, and mandible to eat the food. So here, the ones, the first one, the first one, the black color pouch, that is a well-developed menaka with the brood pouch with the menaka larvae. Once they develop the entire organ, when they can able to attach to the other host only, these parasites will release their matured young ones. The next one, we can uh, look this slides about the microhabitat of the isopod parasites. So microhabitat, so among the fish also, they have different microhabitat like branchial, buccal, and body surface. That means some of these parasites will live in the gill region. That is a branchial region. Some of them will live in the buccal region of the fishes. Some of them will live in the body surface of the, of the fishes. So here, what you, are, what you are seeing is an Elisha melastoma fishes. The small one parasite is in the gill region is a male. And bigger one is a female. So that's a branchial parathe. Second is a lizard species. Then third is a rasliger kanangurta affected by the isopod parasites. So this is a more tasty and most uh, valuable and economically important species, uh, Parastomatus niger, that also affected by these parasites. Then what are the damage or what are the effects from these gill parasites? So when, once, once it attached to the gill region, it destroys the entire gill region. So that that's, that make an atrophy condition, the slowdown of the erythrocyte and oxygen exchanging in the gill region will also affect, then destruction of cubbing structures, then irritation of gill epithelium and vigorous proliferation of the branchial epithelium, then the sharp antenna becomes a, a complementary, it's buried inside the hyperplasia tissue, on that way it affects the host organism. So this is a buccal uh, parasite. So parasites are some of the isopods parasites that will live in the buccal region of the fishes also. So once they're living in the buccal mouth region, fishes can't eat another, other organisms. So it affects their uh, feeding behavior also. What you're seeing first is a belt fish, that is a Trachurus lepturus, affected by the Glossobius parasite, then Rosliger Karnagurutta. Then third one is a lizard fish like uh, uh, Trachinocephalus myops, infected by the Cymota indica parasites. And these are the things what we are seeing is a body surface parasite. So these parasites are uh, they have a four species I said. So what we are seeing a body surface parasite, it won't go to the branchial region or buccal region. So that kind of these body surface parasites having a broad specificity. They have lot of uh, you know, that more than 18 number of uh, hosts they are choosing. So that they have, they are coming under the category of a uh, broad host specificity. So you can see in this slide the severity of the infection. Then this is an another uh, bellfish, it's a chirocentrus dorab, affected by the parasites uh, Neurocilla piopilura. And now, uh, apart from the Indian coast, we were collaborated with the other countries like Malaysia also, Malaysia, Singapore, and uh, from the France also. These are the fish parasites we were collected and the characters from the uh, Malaysian coastal waters. Then interestingly, during our study period, we got uh, some of the prawns are affected by the um, Boprid parasites. So Boprid parasites here you can see the A, number A is and their gill region is protruded and swelling. The swollen region is in the presence of an epipenian engines nobly is a parasite name. That's a Boprid parasite. So in the B, the part, B slide you can able to see the structure of the Boprid parasite inside the gill region of the uh, 
um, prawns. So the, coming to the infection of these parasites, the infection of these parasites, whenever if we get some injury in our hands or legs, the, the primary infection, primary injury is not a big issue. But in the major infection is the infection caused by the secondary, that means from our environment. So what are the microbes from the environment that may attach, that make a big problem. So uh, likewise, in the aquatic environment, as you know, their microbial load is very rich. Lot of pathogenic microbes are there in the aquatic environment. So once the parasites, these isopods or other copepods or other amphipods that affect them, make a wound. So from that, by the pathogenic microbes will enter, that causing a problem uh, to the, the, that wound and more mucus production in the fishes, the host may suffer a lot. So these findings we were published in a journal of fish pathology. And these are the different parasites we were collected and re described and redescribed re also. This is some of the collaboration uh, along with the France and other countries we did. Then more, this is another one is a structural and functional morphology. So as I told you in the beginning, the, these parasites having the different uh, adaptations. That means different host specificity also and different microhabitat also. So some of them will live in the mouth region. The mouth uh, parasite, some of them will eat the tongue also. Some of them in the, uh, in the mouth region tissues also. In the body surface, uh, the parasite, they, they will eat the body surface. Then in the gill region, it will eat the gill racker. So based on their mode of feeding, so blood suckers means their mouth region is different from their other parasites. So likewise, they have a specific functional morphology in the mouth parts of these parasites. So this is a zoo taxa. We were collected more than 38 different species of isopods and identified and characterized. Then among the, the, the three different types of microhabitat, much infection and more number of parasites were observed from the gill region. So why these parasites are prefer in the branchial region? That means in the gill region, because the gills are acted as a very good microhabitat or micro environment, and the parasites are getting heavy water current and enemical waves also. They can escape easily from the enemical waves. Then it protect their eggs and young ones from their other predatory parasites and host also. Then these gill region facilitate easy shading and disposal of their young ones. Then they may get continuous water circulation as a, a system of ventilation. Hence that they prefer in the branchial region than the body surface and the buccal region. Then other impact due to this parasitic infection. So you can be able to see from this uh, graphical representation, uh, mortality rate. The mortality rate of the infected hosts are increasing. Then the infected fishes, their growth rate, growth rate is down. More than 66% the growth rate is down. Okay. Then it also affect, it also hinder the reproductive characteristic features of the fishes. In the red color is an indication of the parasitic fishes. That reproduction is uh, reduced. The production of ovary and the young ones, all those things are affected uh, because of this parasitic infection. And you may ask a question. So is there any disease may come from these parasites? Yes. So what kind of uh, uh, fish pond parasitic zoonosis are there? So that we can see here. Uh, see here, that is uh, mainly their name is a trematodesis. That's from the trematode parasites. Then some of them are ansichiosis. That coming from the nematode parasites. Then platyalmenis and nematyalmenis are the major fish pond parasites. So first slide, what, what we are seeing is here, species of liver flukes reported from the human. So though the humans are not a definite host of these parasites, this is an accidental one. Here in the first one is a liver fluke reported from the human. Their main host is a molluscan and piscian host. But there are other definite hosts are their domestic animals like dogs and cats. Then second one is a uh, echinosomes. So echinosomes and another platyhelminthes platyhel in this true group, flatworms. So they are piscian hosts, they are freshwater snail and freshwater fishes. Their other definite hosts are, are the rats and dogs. So here also they were most, mostly reported from the Italy and the Romania, Russia, and most of their infection from the Asian countries only. The third one, what you are seeing is a heteromopoid. So this also, their, their uh, molluscan and uh, piscian coasts are the freshwater snails and fishes. So here their definite hosts are the dogs and cats and rats also. So likewise, so, so you can see this life cycle, this is an ansichiosis life cycle. 
So the ankylosis parasite that causing a tremendous problem into the whole entire world, I can say, especially the European waters. So here, this ankylosis, their major host is, and that means that their definitely host is here, marine mammals. See, in the marine mammals, so they the parasites living in their uh, uh, intestine. So once they excrete, the eggs are coming out. So in the eggs, they have an L1, L2, L3. So after it come out from their excreta, the L3 is a developed one that's ready to attach to their host. Their intermediate host is a crustacean like copepods and uh, other prawns and crabs. So it attaches to these uh, intermediate host. Then once the carnivorous fishes are eaten and the, squ uh, the squids are eaten by this intermediate crustacean, it may enter into their fishes or in the squid. Then if man can, if we human beings have, uh, consume this uh, um, so this could as well as the host fishes, it may enter into our body. That also acts accidental at the same time, way of our cooking also different. Because so those people, some of the countries, because of their palatability and taste, they are making in a half cooked manner. Some of them are eating a raw materials also, raw fishes also. So that kind of things, uh, things if the parasites present in their fishes, that may enter. Hence that I have mentioned that an accidental host. Then generally, the host, what kind of problems for the host? Their major problem is oxygen consumption is 25% higher in the parasitic fishes. Then they may lose their weight, then metabolic disturbance. The approximation combustion will also decrease. So those are uh, the affected fishes are failure to grow properly. Then reduction in their respiratory surface area, then uh, diminish in the water flow then reduce the oxygen uptake that make a physical irritation then and that those parasites are living in the fin region of the fishes then fishes can't uh, fish this is, fish can't swim properly that affect the locomotion of the fishes although the mouth, mouth cavity prevent the normal feeding and it disturbs the respiration those parasites living in the uh, gill region also the activity is higher in the fossils it consume more oxygen so it affect the physiology of the fishes also so it interfere normal irrigation of the gills and all together it affect the lifespan of the fishes as well as it affect the reproduction of the fishes and it, it leads to the secondary microbial infection overall it affect the economy of the fishes also so recent times so we know we people we human beings also suffering lot of uh, tumors and cancer problem so because of our food habit because of our environment polluted so here the fish is also not an exceptional one. So fish is also affected by the tumor problem. So past two, 20 years, I'm concentrating on this aquatic animal health problem. So 15 years before, we never come across such a kind of problems in this kind of tumor problem. So, so mainly the sodden fish are much affected by this tumor problem. So I'm looking on the parasites. Two of my colleagues are concentrating on the tumor problem of the fishes. But coming to the uh, infection ratio. So infection ratio, uh, we are concentrating for the past to do two decades on the infection of these parasitic infection. So this is the data from the 2007 to 2008. You can see the how the infection ratio, that is a prevalence of the infection, is increasing. Then this is the data of the 2008, 9, and 10. How the uh, frequency and prevalence has increased, you can able to see here. Likewise, so this is the data from the 